Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we will continue discussing our bleeding and coagulation series of lectures. This is the 18th video in my series. We'll talk about a comparison between the intrinsic and the extrinsic coagulation pathways, and let's get started. As I've told you before, hemostasis is prevention of blood loss by stopping the bleeding. Steps of hemostasis, we have vasoconstriction, then temporary platelet plug, also known as primary hemostasis. The hero here is the platelet. Then coagulation or secondary hemostasis, the heroes here are the coagulation factors. The coagulation factors are, are they albumin or globulin? And the answer is globulin, but we have different types of globulin. We have alpha globulin, beta globulins, and gamma globulins. What kind of globulin are those coagulation factors? And the answer is beta globulins. How about the gamma globulins? No, no, no. The gamma globulins are the immunoglobulins, also known as the antibodies. Cool. Then we have fibrinolysis. As the cat that cleans after itself, the body is like a nice cat. It dissolves the clot and restores the function, restoring the normal blood flow. Then regeneration and repair the injured traumatized tissue. Primary hemostasis is balanced on the dynamic harmonious antagonism between the smooth endothelium which wants the blood to flow and the thrombocytes which wants blood clotting. This is anticoagulation, these are procoagulation. It's a balance. When you have less platelets, you'll bleed. When you have more platelets, theoretically, you will thrombose. Here is the story, you injure yourself, vasoconstriction of the blood vessel occur, then temporary platelet plug calls also known as primary hemostasis, and depending on the type of the trauma. If it's a small trauma, the platelet plug is sufficient, I'm done, thank you primary hemostasis, and that's it. If it's a larger trauma, we need the secondary hemostasis, also known as the coagulation cascade, to lay down the fibrin meshwork, to trap the red blood cells, then the clot will contract, providing the serum, and then fibrinolysis to clean this mess, restore the blood flow, and regenerate the tissue. Here's the first step, called, also known as vasoconstriction. I'm not going to talk about this anymore because I've talked about it before, but just remember it's a local automatic myogenic spasm. Like the policeman who checks the security gate, and like the engineer in a post-earthquake inspection who checks the painting on the wall. The platelets are floating in the blood when they say when they see a cracked endothelial layer and an exposed subendothelial collagen underneath they go nuts and start their primary hemostasis primary hemostasis first platelet adhesion they adhere to the subendothelial collagen thanks to the von willebrand factor which is synthesized by the endothelium and stored in the platelets the platelets use their nice receptor GP1B to adhere to this von Willebrand factor. Then we have the platelet activation. They get active and they start to release stuff such as the ADP and thromboxane E2. ADP will express this nice receptor called GP2B3A. So we call this ADP-dependent expression of GP2B3A receptor. Thromboxane E2 again will help platelet aggregation and will cause vasoconstriction because vasoconstriction helps the blood clot by decreasing the surface area. Remember, here is GP1B, here is GP2B. 1B, 2B. Adhesion first, then aggregation later. 1 comes before 2. Makes it easier for you. Then we have platelet aggregation, this platelet and this platelet, each one has its own GP2B3A receptor, and then there is a molecule of fibrinogen in between. The next step is to convert this fibrinogen into nice fibrin fibers to form a meshwork, this is called the secondary plug, and then trap the red blood cells, and here you have a strong plug. Remember my words of wisdom, there are only two ways to coagulate, but there are several of ways to bleed. This is so deep. What are the two ways to coagulate? The intrinsic pathway 
and the extrinsic pathway. Why did I write the intrinsic pathway in a larger font? It's bigger than this because the intrinsic pathway is longer than the extrinsic. Everything in my slides is for a reason. I have great news for you. I have 50 hematology cases on the topic of platelets and bleeding disorders. They are on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. They are 50 and I promise you will never answer the 50 correctly. You will always have mistakes. I will write more cases later about more subjects. So go to Patreon. At least if you don't want to purchase these cases, at least follow me on Patreon. That's why that's how you get notified when I release new cases. Following on Patreon is free. Let's talk about the extrinsic pathway. Why called extrinsic? Because we need something from outside of the blood vessel, i.e. tissue, to provide us with tissue factor. And this tissue factor will activate factor 7. Factor 7 is now active. Well, it's going to activate factor 10. And boom, prothrombin, thrombin, fibrogen, fibrin, trap the red blood cells, form a secondary clot. Very nice. Let's talk about the intrinsic pathway. More steps. We start with factor 12. We need something from within the vessel, so the subendothelial collagen, to activate factor 12 into factor 12a, 11, then we have 9, then 8. So 8, 9, 11, 12. How about 10? 10 is here. After this, you have prothrombin, thrombin, fibrogen, fibrin. Boom, we are done. By the way, here also we have the high molecular weight kinanogen activating factor 12. Also, we have Kellicrin doing the same stuff. Now, the big comparison, intrinsic versus extrinsic. What do you mean by intrinsic? It's something from within us, within the vessel, such as the subendothelial collagen or the high molecular weight kinanogen or Kellicrin. So the intrinsic is self-sufficient, something from within. Extrinsic, on the other hand, something from without from outside of the blood, from outside the vessel, which you mean by which we mean the tissue. That's why we call the factor that comes from the tissue, um, tissue factor. So then the next thing is, intrinsic has more steps, a longer cascade. If it's long, it's gonna be more efficient. Why? Remember the cascade, it's like a small waterfall. It gains gravity, acceleration, and momentum as it goes down. Boom, 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 boom. Hashtag gravity. Extrinsic, on the other hand, has less steps, shorter cascade. It's faster, but it less. it's less efficient. Intrinsic starts with factor 12. Who activates factor 12? You have the subendothelial collagen, and you have the high molecular weight kinanogen and plasma calicrin. Cool. Let's start with factor 7. Who activates factor 7? The tissue factor, also known as tissue thromboplastin or tissue phospholipid TPL. Cool. Factors in the intrinsic, we have 2 before 10 and 2 after 10. We have 8, 9, 11, 12. How about 10? 10 is the hero. 10 is in the center, is in the common pathway. Extrinsic involves only factor 7. The intrinsic, we use to measure it, the PTT test. The PTT measures the intrinsic pathway and the common pathway. This is very important. The PT measures only the extrinsic pathway and the common pathway. Thank you for watching. Again, there are 50 plus hematology cases on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Also, you'll get all of my notes. You'll get other topics such as scombroid poisoning. It's only on Patreon. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and as always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine just makes perfect sense.